So my name is Sean Smith. I lead product management for Grawl VM, and I'm joined today by uh, Ole Schelle, who is our develop one of our developer advocates on Grawl VM. And today he's going to present on building CLI applications with Grawl VM Enterprise's native image feature. Okay, Ole, I'll let you go ahead, and then I'll come back later for Q&A at the end. Thank you, Sean. Hi, everyone. My name is Oleg, and uh, as Sean mentioned, I work on Grawl VM on the team. Uh, CLI applications are one of my favorite topics, to be honest. Like uh, a lot of very useful developer tooling is built that way. And I liked it from my very first experience with, with uh, being a developer. Uh, so let's start. Uh, this is the technical presentation. So do not make any foregoing business decisions based on the contents of this. And also note that GraalVM native image technology is available under the early adopter uh, uh, status. So be mindful of that. Common line applications are maybe not the most, uh, the most, the usual thing that you think about when you talk about uh, applications that you're building or your teams are building, but it, it somehow touches the lives of almost all developers, right? The developer tooling, yes, there are IDEs, yes, there are CI CD pipelines, but the bunch of the developer tooling is the common line applications that you run from the terminal all sorts of the cloud configuration tools where you would use the uh, the commands, you would issue the commands for the cloud to auto-scale your services or provide some sort of uh, reaction to what you're trying to achieve. Those are the common line applications. All kinds of utilities that you use to like daily, you, you want, usually want the batch jobs to be triggered as common line applications. And one common thing that unites all those are, is that they're all user-facing apps. Right? It might not sound like a lot, uh, but every common line application is something that you actually build, package, and ship to your users. And from that, what we get, we get a certain set of requirements, what we want the common line applications to be. So as developers, we want our CLI apps to use modern languages, programming languages, and have a flexible API and have all the options to uh, to, to implement a common line application, like to concentrate on the business logic of that rather than on writing the mundane tasks of like managing the options that you pass there. Uh, so you want the flexibility, you want the established ecosystem support that you can plug various things into that and, and still concentrate on the, just the, the actual business value. Right? But from the user point of view, we want completely different things. Right? And sometimes the end users of those apps are also developers, but they then when they are using those applications, they require different things. And the most, the top three things that end users would want from your apps is that they have the standalone installation, installation, that they actually work fast and they don't consume a ton of resources, right? And in a nutshell, very quickly, if we think about this, the end user experience trumps the developer experience because we are building things and this is not just about the common line applications. We're building things to benefit our users. And that is more important typically than uh, the, the exact details of our like frameworks or language details or, or what developers want, right? The, the application needs to satisfy the users. So standalone installation is very important, right? You don't want to ship your Python application to the user then only to determine to figure out that, oh, there's certain Python versions that are installed are incompatible. Uh, you want, yeah, and they cannot run it or they have a different version of the JDK installed and then your Java application doesn't run there. Uh, so you want the standalone package installation. You want your command line application to react fast, right? It's not even about the, the actual performance, how fast it can compute things, but it want, you want it to react fast because the perceived performance will be very important. If your application tends, takes a couple of seconds to just think and react to the simplest commands like help or something, it's not gonna be impressive, right? People will feel that it's laggy and it's slow and it's sluggish and they will, they will not be happy using it. And also the same goes with the resource consumption where if your application just tries to hog as much memory as possible, this will be a little bit uh, uh, it will make the user sound happy. So you want those three things from your application. How do you get them? Welcome Oracle Graal VM. It can help you with all those things for your common line applications, and you will still be able to write them in Java or other Java uh, J, or other JVM based languages. 
Oracle Grandium is, of course, offers you a number of things and adds value to, to your platform with the, the high-performance state-of-the-art optimizing just-in-time compiler to just run your Java applications faster with the head of time native image technology that can take your Java application and compile that into the native executable. And of course, it's a polyglot virtual machine, so it can you can use different languages. So for the common one applications, we're gonna concentrate on using the Gravium Enterprise native image technology to take our application and package it as a platform dependent binary that will be standalone, efficient to start and have low resource consumption. So exactly the things that we want from the common line applications. It is also very useful. The native image technology is very useful in other use cases, for example, in cloud deployments, right? But for now, it's the common lab applications. So Gravium native image to the rescue. How does it work? It takes your application, it takes your libraries, it takes your classes from JDK standard library. Uh, it takes the components of the virtual machine from the Gravium project called Substratium. And then it looks at all that Java code, right? And that, and then it initializes your application, right? So it figures out what, uh, what classes are gonna be used. It figures out what uh, objects will gonna be instantiated. It figures out which code is reachable and which code is actually just there because it, it, it's packaged with the, with the application and dependencies. Right? So it takes the snapshot of the reachable code and objects and compiles that ahead of time into the binary. And then it writes out into the executable two important things, both the code that will be run in your application and also the data that was pre-initialized during this analysis and the initialization of the application. So the code is data is written out and that allows the, the result, this, the executable that is created by native image uh, to start really, really fast and be ready instantly to serve actually the business requests the business needs of your users, whether that is, I don't know, crunching some data or doing some outgoing HTTP requests. So this is the principle. It takes bytecode and it outputs the binary. Now the Gravium native image, right? Uh, and specifically the Oracle Gravium uh, Enterprise Edition native image technology will take care of the user experience needs, right? It will package and it will give you the binary, which is standalone, fast, and uh, reasonable with the resources. The developer, is, the developer experience is something that you have more freedom to choose from, right? Since native image expects just the JVM bytecode to be as the input, so you just need the Java application, you can pick the libraries from the extensive Java ecosystem that actually serve your needs or that you just like. So one combination for the common line applications, which is really, really great and works together great, is the Pico CLI, which is the framework for the common line applications, and Micronaut, which is the framework for the applications in general, which provides some very useful additions. So the combo of those have a really good user experience, and we'll see in the example how they work together. Of course, that doesn't mean that you need to stick to this too, right? It, it, you have the flexibility to use whatever you want. So for example, you can use other JVM languages as well, such as Groovy or Kotlin. And then for those languages, you of course will use maybe some, Pico CLI actually works with Kotlin really well, but you might want to use like some other application frameworks for the common line applications. So for Kotlin, for example, could be clicked, uh, but you, you have the freedom. If it compiles to Java bytecode, you can pass it through the Oracle Gravium native image, and then it will work the same way, right? So what you want from common line application is you want from the combination of the technology that offers you, you want a number of things. You want the API and the flexibility for the argument parsing, the handling the commands and subcommands, uh, the configuration dependency injection, figure it out how to do the tests, you, your CLI most probably will try to access some uh, remote resource. So you need this HTTP client, et cetera. Right? So you need those functional, uh, functional capabilities from the tech that offers you. And it's also really good if it also works with the, the, provides the configuration for the Gravium native image uh, and provides the options to maybe pre-configure the memory usage if you want, all that. So, and Pico CLI, 
gives you that. Pixelag gives you more. It supports the color output. It supports the, the syntax styles, the tab completion, the different different types to different ways to configure your uh, CLI. It's a, it's a great little library that uh, I think more people could know of. Right? Not a requirement to build common lines applications or anything, but it's a good one. Right. So let's let's see how it works. Let's see a short demo of a command line application and let's explore let's explore the combination of the Pika CLI, Micronaut, and uh, how it interacts with the ground native image to build the common line application that is really pleasant to use and that, that satisfies the user needs that we talked about before. Right. So I have my cloud machine here, which is a Linux machine where I do all my experiments specifically because my workstation is not the most powerful in the world. So when Zoom is running, it's kind of not the greatest experience to use that. So cloud machine, Linux, you can use the same in Windows or Mac OS and uh, uh, of course, or on the local machine, but just note that this is the, the demo that runs somewhere uh, on the workstation in Oracle Cloud. I have my Micronaut application generated uh, with the Pico CLI template. And it gives me two main things. So this is the normal Java application. You can see that it's written using normal Java. Uh, PKCLI gives you annotations to configure your application to be an actual common line application to process commands. Right? You can use an annotation command and give the name to the command that you want to uh, that you want to use in the future. And normally you would like to have the configuration in some in some form of an options. So for example, our test application here will use the, will, will compute the prime numbers, which is not the most uh, most valuable business logic in the world, but it does the job of uh, look, looking at uh, like as a sample, right? So we'll have two options. We will limit with double uh, dash L or double dash limit, which is the upper limit for how big of the prime numbers we want to have. And we configure that with an option annotation and also how many of them we want is another option. So using Pico CLI is actually really just writing your Java application and adding some annotations to turn that into the common line application. It will also give you some utilities like help and verbose modes out of the box. And you can see here this injection of the actual code that will do the primes computation. Let me just go there quickly, All right? This class here is the Micronaut component, it's a singleton that we will in, in, init, instantiate once for our application, and we can inject that into our command. So the combination of the Pico CLI and Micronaut allows you to use a very flexible uh, programming style that you would expect from the web applications. So if you, if you developed, I don't know, Spring applications or Java EE applications, you would know the, the definitions of the beans and how the dependency injection works. So it's 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 a very convenient way to actually provide services to your uh, main application. So this one code, this code here, will just calculate some prime numbers using the very uh, not very sophisticated like divisibility criterion, right? So we take this one and we inject that into the primes command, and then we configure that with the options. Let's see how we can run this. Let's see how we can run this. Let me just open my terminal quickly here. Let me just open my terminal here. Right, uh, you can see that, let me make it a little bit larger here. Uh, what we hear here, it's a typical Gradle project, so I can build it normally, and I've built it before not to waste uh, that minute from the actual application. So what I have now is I have my, uh, my built uh, libs directory where I have my jar files, and one of them is our command line application. So I will just take that and I can do Java, and if you if you are curious, I'm running my Java from the GraalVM distribution. So this is this is the the normal hotspot based uh, Java running here. So I can do Java minus jar and run this application. And for example, ask for help. And you can see that because I provide me with help, and you can see our options. And you can also run the same application and just use something. Say I want small primes and I want one line of the prime numbers. You can see that there is a random sequence of primes under 100. You can also, I can also do more. 
I can also do more. And this is just an example. You can see how in the beginning, when I just type this, even with one, there is a slight pause before my application will react. This is what I was talking about when I was talking about how uh, I want my application to be snappy because otherwise it will feel slow. So you can see if I time the execution of this computation that shouldn't take any time at all, right? To compute five prime numbers. It takes actually more than a second to run. And it also uses more than 340 megabytes of RAM to just do this simple computation. This is just a lot of resources for not a lot of work. So this is not ideal. What we can do this, we can build the native image out of the, this application. Micronet provides the help to configure the native image uh, build. So for example, uh, you can just do, uh, what you can do, you can do, uh, wait, you can do something like Gradle W native image, and it will process the Micronet application and build the native image out of it. And it will also take a few, a few minutes maybe. So we're not gonna do that, but what we have here is, uh, what we have here, we have the pre-built applications here for, for the same technology. So Prime's default, uh, let's look at that. Prime's defaults, this is a very uh, simple application, it takes 60 megabytes of, uh, of the disk space. What I can do, it's executable, right? I can run it and it can run with the same thing. I can do help, it's very fast. Look, it prints the same thing and I can do uh, minus L, minus, like 100 minus N1, you can see that it runs instantly, right? And then uh, because it just doesn't need to turn on the JVM, load the classes and all that. Uh, and if I do the, the time experiment, user bin time double F, double V minus V, and then the same thing, right? You can see that it runs really, really fast. It takes like just a, a few milliseconds to start and run and do this. And then it takes like 50 megabytes of RAM to do this. So it's very, very efficient and it's very snappy. So the user experience of doing this is much, much more convenient. And this is the binary file that they can distribute to other platforms and other machines and run them there. So if I do uh, the look what it's linked against, right? It's, it links, it is linked against the operating system libraries. So uh, I, can, I can send it to, our, to my users and they will be able to calculate the prime numbers very efficiently from the common line, right? So this is what I wanted to show you. You can also do more. You can pre-configure the heap size uh, or pre uh, how, how many how many how much RAM does it do you want it to use uh, before actually building the native image. So that's a very good idea, and uh, it will compile with those limits in mind. So you can control things uh, very well before you ship your application to the users, right? And then if you want if you want your application to run even faster, because the ahead of time compilation not always produces the, the results comparable to the warmed up JIT, if you want your application to run for a few minutes or uh, do some bad jobs, you definitely want to look at the, uh, the means of improvement, the peak throughput and the latency requirements for the RealVM native images. So the Oracle Problem Enterprise Edition allows you to use the G1 GC garbage collection uh, to improve the latencies. So because uh, it will adapt, adaptively change your heap configuration to, to work for that. And then also the profile guided optimizations, which is where you can build an instrument and binary, collect the profile of the work, and then use that profile sort of the same way the JIT uses the profile uh, to generate better machine code, use that profile during the native image generation build step and uh, you will get an optimized binary, right? So those two definitely what you should look at uh, when you build your applications, CLI applications included, right? And then the throughput and the, the, the performance characteristics of the Gralium Enterprise native image like that will be very similar to, uh, to the warmed up JIT but it will also be like that from the get-go. So it has the flat performance profile, which is very, very nice. And it will make your common line applications uh, stand out, but being very nice to use, right? Because they're not sluggish, right? One application that I wanted to uh, showcase here, one of the projects that uses Gralium native images is the Dragon Stack Manager, which is a common line 
a utility that uh, can configure the autonomous backend for you. So the autonomous database in the Oracle Cloud and the required services, uh, it can configure that. It can pre-configure. It will, can generate the pre-configured applications for you uh, with React frontend and the uh, the Spring backend. So if you if you are working with the autonomous database, this is the tool that can simplify the generation of new projects or the management of the uh, resource provisioning, which is very cool. And they they distribute the the application as RealVM native images, which is very very interesting. One thing to note there, actually, so what they use, they also compress those executables. So they are not even smaller in size on disk by training that. The trade-off is there. They start a little bit slower, like a few hundred milliseconds. Uh, but after the compression, you can see there, uh, the native binaries, right? The Dragon Linux OS X and Windows executables are actually smaller than the jar file uh, that, they, <laughs> that they also have, right? So it is more efficient to build a native image and ship it to as a command line tool and ship it to your clients than actually ship them a jar file that will also depend on the JVM, right? So it's a, it's a really, really great way. And there are a number of projects that adopted that adopted uh, GraalVM native image for the command line applications. For example, the Micronaut CLI app is the native image. The Halidon, uh, which is another uh, framework for, for microservices, uh, like lightweight applications, uh, supported by Oracle, an open source one as well. Uh, uh, their CLI app is a native image. SBT, the Scala build tool, has a native thing client that is native image of the of the client, and it, it it makes the experience using SBT really really different. It's not sluggish; it's just instant. The Dragon Stack, as I meant, mentioned, the Google Closure compiler, which is the minimizing compiler for JavaScript, if you want to use that uh, on the command line ships native image as an optional dependency. So you can, you can install that and many, many other projects as well. So a lot of projects picked native image for that. And you should also look into this technology if you're building any command line applications. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's it, right? It's a, it's a brief description, uh, but I think I, I touched on most of the points, what makes command line applications excellent and how GraalVM Enterprise native image technology can help with building those. Well, thanks, Oleg. That's actually really interesting. Uh, the, the size of the uh, the Dragon Stack example, <clears throat> like you, you said the jar was like 28 meg or so, but then you've got the whole JVM or whole JRE you need to have on the target machine too, right? So the footprint on disk is pretty huge compared to executables. Yes, right. and then and then you might have a different version. For example, if you if you build if you want to use like in modern newer Java features, for example, build your command line application using Java eleven uh, language features like the var keyword and, and and some API, and then your end users might have the Java eight based uh, JDK on the path by default. So when they want to run your jar file, they will get like errors, and they will need to spend time figuring out things. Uh, it all can be avoided with with some educational like tutorials and materials, right? But you might as well just avoid that altogether by the shipping the standalone binary. Yeah, actually, that's a good point. I, I had experienced this problem with Python, but you know, you download some tools and go, oh, we've got Python two or Python three, and then my Mac's the wrong version. But I hadn't actually thought about the pre-installed JDK that would mismatch the version of the CLI tool I was just downloading because it's just some tool, right? I wouldn't I wouldn't be thinking about it. Good point. <clears throat> 